Electronics is an exciting world. People nowadays tend to forget the basics. Simple electronic circuits with basic components that work in an almost magical way. In fact, it's not that magically complex at all. I will show you with clear and to the point explanations of how it works. Let's take a look at today's circuit. This is one of the first circuits that most people get to know when introduced to electronics but also seemingly one of the more difficult ones to really understand the working principle. It is a transistor-based S-stable multivibrator, also called oscillator, most commonly used as an LED flasher. Let's take a look at the build-up. It consists of four resistors, two transistors Q1 and Q2, and two capacitors. In this example, it is used as an LED flasher so we also have two LEDs. We can actually split the circuit in half because the two sides are identical. Q1 is controlled by this resistor capacitor pair. Q2 is controlled by the other pair. For simplicity and understanding we can represent the transistors as switches between the collector and the emitter. For the base of the transistor we represent it as a diode which has the same behavior. When powering up the circuit, both transistors are open. The diodes or base of the transistor have a threshold voltage of 0.7 volts. Below that voltage, the transistor will remain open. At the collector of the transistor, the voltage will be the supply voltage now. One thing to mention, the middle resistors that control the transistors are much higher in value than the outer ones, which are the series resistors for the LEDs. Because of this, it will take some time before the capacitor is charged. The charge will start building up now. Because of component tolerances, one side of the circuit will always be slightly quicker than the other. After some time, one capacitor reaches the threshold of 0.7 volts. This causes the transistor to be powered and closes. The LED on that side will light up. At the same time, something very interesting happens to the capacitor on that side. Let's take a closer look. Here we see the circuit isolated. Before the switch closes, the voltage at the collector is the supply voltage. The voltage at the negative side of the capacitor is close to 0.7 volts. Over the capacitor is a voltage difference of the supply voltage minus 0.7 volts in the direction of the transistor collector. Now, when we close the switch, the voltage at the collector will become 0 volts, since it's connected to ground now. At the other side of the capacitor, however, the voltage will flip to a negative voltage. Why does this happen? Let's see it more clearly with numbers. Let's say our supply voltage is 12 volts. That means the voltage over the capacitor is 12 volts minus 0.7 volts. That is 11.3 volts in the direction of the positive side of the capacitor. When the positive side of the capacitor is connected to ground, this voltage difference over the capacitor remains, causing the voltage relative to the ground to become minus 11.3 volts. Because of this negative voltage at the base of the transistor, the transistor will remain open. Meanwhile, current is still flowing through the resistor. This causes the capacitor to charge up again. The voltage will rise towards a positive level. Until, at some point, it reaches the threshold of 0.7 volts. This causes the other transistor to become active, closing that side. So, at this point, the base reaches 0.7 volts and the transistor becomes closed. The LED lights up. The voltage at the collector drops to 0 volts, ground level. The capacitor has built up the charge of 11.3 volts, leading to the negative voltage at the base of the other transistor. This causes that transistor to stop conducting and it becomes open again. The LED turns off. The same process repeats on the left side now. The voltage at the negative side of the capacitor will start rising again, up until 0.7 volts, 
where the right transistor powers on again, causing a negative voltage at the left transistor's base. The left side opens again and the cycle keeps repeating. This circuit can be used in many ways. If you want to blink only one LED, simply remove the LED on one side and connect the resistor directly. It is important that these resistors are the same value. And the capacitors must be equal as well. The oscillation frequency is determined by the combination of the resistors and capacitors. It can easily be calculated by the simple formula. R is the value of one resistor and C is the value of one capacitor. F will be the frequency in Hertz. I hope this explanation has been clear to you and I hope you get inspired by the logical way these simple circuits used to be made. Nowadays people use microcontrollers for practically anything, losing touch with actual electronics and the magic that goes with it. If you want to see more of this, don't forget to subscribe and questions and comments are always welcome below. Also, if you haven't seen it yet, check out my latest project SnackCube, a fully functional snack delivery robot built without microcontrollers or software programming. And as always, thank you for watching and see you next time.